So now that we've uh, established for the past couple of videos now, um, all the things that Mendel did, his model, some of his laws, all of these expansive and sort of father of genetic components that he was in charge of and that he helped develop through his work with those pea plants, we can finally sort of conclude all of this Mendelian dis genetics discussion by talking about a very important part of all of genetics known as probability laws. Because if you think about it, genetics really is and it all comes down to probability. Now, some things in genetics are more probable than others and some things are more complex in terms of their probability than others, but more so than not in gen bio we can cut down the probability laws to some very simple components. When we look at probability laws in terms of Mendelian genetics we have to understand that the law of segregation and also Mendel's law of independent assortment both reflect basic rules of probability. Reflect basic rules of probability. This is where math plays a big role in terms of genetics. What we can state further from this sort of ideal statement, this initial statement, is that all genetic ratios are all genetic ratios are expressed in terms of probability. In terms of probability. We sort of did this without even knowing. When I did one half and one fourth, um, capital G, lowercase g, those were probabilities. Those were cross multiplication events that gave us expressions of probabilities individually or like as if in terms of an example specifically we can state that something like segregation segregation simply speaking is a chance event there is chance associated to how things will segregate because there's a law of segregation things segregate independently of each other when we say things what do we mean we obviously mean those sister chromatids that is all chance and if it's related to chance it's then of course related to probability so we can sort of put this into more uh, specific context by understanding a very basic component of probability known as the probability of an event the probability of event can either be very simply speaking two things one of two things it can either happen I know this is very obvious it can happen or it doesn't happen simple as that but we can, we as geneticists as probability sort of driven people we can say that when something happens the chance of it happening is equal to one and if something doesn't happen the chance of it happening is equal to zero and then there's a whole sort of slew of things that can happen in between zero and one whether it can be point one point nine point zero one point zero nine nine all of those things are the probability of an event that's how geneticists utilize probability in their determination if it happens or doesn't happen and sort of the spectrum at which it occurs on this probability of an event. There are two basic rules in terms of probability laws that you need to understand as we uh, sort of continue our discussion on genetics as a whole. There's the multiplication rule, sort of something we've actually done already. The multiplication rule simply tells us the idea, um, it's based off of the combined probabilities. So it's combined probability of, and this is key right here, I'm going to write this in big letters, independent events. Combined probability of independent events. Remember this independence because there's going to be a difference when we look at the addition rule a little bit later. So this is the key here. Combined probability of independent events. I can define an independent event, i.e., as the occurrence of one event, let's write this down, occurrence of one event doesn't affect probability of another, doesn't affect probability of another. Basically, what we mean is if something happens and another thing happens, both of those things independently happened. Just because one happened does not change the probability of the other happening. They are independent events. 
Now, a simple way to write this in terms of genetics and probability more specifically is the idea of something like probability and in parentheses of this happening. So this means probability of this and probability of, let's say, that two independent events, this and that. This and right here is key and it tells you to multiply. This means that you have to multiply. The multiplication rule is essentially known as the and rule as well. The probability of this combined and with the probability of that can give us a very simple example such as this. So an example of this and that in terms of the multiplication rule would be the probability of somebody being heterozygous, a parent, and having an offspring or ha mating with another heterozygote parent. What we ask ourselves in terms of this, let's say, is what is probability of, let's say, first child being lowercase a, lowercase a. That's our question. That's what the geneticist has to answer. If the parents are this, this is our parent cross. So what do we do? We can figure out, and we can write this sort of over here on down here with a little bit more space, we want to know the probability of something, the probability of this. So we'll say probability of lowercase a, lowercase a, homozygous recessive, is actually equal to the probability of mom donating her lowercase a. So how, what is the chance of that happening? She can either donate capital or donate lowercase a. So guess what? That probability is going to be um, one half and we'll talk about that later. So this is from mom and so multiplied by the probability of dad doing the same thing. Why are they both doing the same thing? Because we need a homozygous recessive um, offspring. This is basically the idea of mom mating with dad to both eventually donate that recessive allele. The chances of this happening are one half times one half. Why? Because mom has a half chance of donating a lowercase allele because look, if you split this in half, one gamete might get this and the other gamete might get that. Dad, same exact thing. One gamete might get this and the one gamete might get that. So because we're using that term and, we have to multiply. Notice these multiplication events happening here. We have one half chance of this and one, ha one half chance of that combining to give us a final probability of a homozygous recessive offspring at one half times one half, which is one fourth. That is our final answer. Be comfortable and be able to practice questions like this. It's important to understand as we talk about probability laws and look at genetic problems more specifically. The last thing that we'll talk about in this video is the addition rule. So we'll do that one over here. The addition rule. The addition rule is a little bit different than the multiplication rule in the sense that this is also the combined probability, but it's the combined probability of what we consider mutually exclusive events. I kind of consider that the opposite of a, a multiplication rule. Combined probability of mutually exclusive events. Know this term, mutually exclusive. So let's see what that means. Mutually exclusive simply means, and I'm going to write this down on the side over here just to save space, two things that can't happen simultaneously. Simultaneously. That's what mutually exclusive means. Two things that cannot happen at the same time. When you combine their probabilities of happening, they cannot happen at the same time, but they both can happen in some way, shape, or form. They are considered mutually exclusive events. A better way to understand this is thinking of it as P, probability of this, or probability of that. Instead of probability of this and probability of that. Look at the or. This or tells you immediately you are going to be looking at the addition rule. So let's do a very basic example very quickly. An example could be, let's say, same thing. We have a parent cross of two heterozygotes, capital A and lowercase a. Let me ask you a question. What is the probability of getting a heterozygous offspring? What is the probability of a het? Otherwise, what is the probability of getting capital A and lowercase a as the offspring? 
That's our question. Just like we had a question here, this is our question right here. So how can we solve this? Well, you can state that one of these parents right here, let's say this is mom, has the probability of having an A from egg. Oh, excuse me, this is not mom. This is one of the childs, let's say. This is the offspring. Let's imagine this is the offspring. That offspring can get A from the egg. Let's say this is the egg right here on the left-hand side. Or, I'm going to write plus instead of or, A from sperm. So you need both of these things. So you can get A from egg, and you, then you have to get, obviously, lowercase a from sperm. But there's another possibility altogether in which you can switch the things around, right? You can instead do capital A from what? From sperm. And then you would automatically get A from egg. Notice the switcheroo that happened here. Sperm and egg, sperm and egg. This is the or possibility. This means that there has to be an addition rule. Some sort of addition has to happen. So what we can sort of label out all of this final problem to is one expression is that the probability of getting a heterozygote is simply then going to be, this gets a little complex, but bear in mind, um, this is an addition rule, so it's a little bit more complex altogether. We have to do bracket, so there's a bracket here. The probability of getting capital A, let's say from mom, represented right here, A from egg, capital A from egg, multiplied by the probability of then what's the other option if you want to get capital A, lowercase a. Lowercase a from dad it has to be that. So that's our first option. But remember, this is or. I have to somehow represent the or. What do you have to do if you see or? This first part of the uh, problem that we have here that I just underlined is this right here put into a very easy to understand form. But now I have to say or. I have to figure out how to put this in an expression. The or is simply going to be a nice big plus sign. I'm going to put a plus sign, but now new brackets to represent this situation right here. Remember, this is what I just underlined. I'm going to write it out again. This is going to be the probability of A, but this time capital A comes from dad, multiplied by probability of lowercase a from mom. Close all of that out. And then we finally get, after some manipulation and some calculations, I'll let you do that on your own, but what you eventually will end up with is the one-fourth plus, not to multiply by, one-fourth plus one-fourth. Each bracket represents one-fourth. You can double-check me on that to give you a final probability of one-half. That's our addition rule. So overall, these are our probability laws. You have to understand these to appreciate really the complexity that is within genetics. We use probability laws more specifically when things get more complex than a Punnett square, as these examples and situations just showed you. So overall, I hope you have a better understanding of Mendelian genetics. Please, please, please walk away with the understanding that Gregor Mendel, the father of genetics, was able to do all of this and think of all of these complex things to you and me back when it was 1900 or 18 something, when nobody had any idea what a gene was, what a chromosome was, and he was able to deduce and figure out this information utilizing that very advantageous pea plant. Have a greater appreciation for Gregor Mendel, have a greater appreciation for genetics altogether.